Hey everyone and welcome to our next online Bible study called Flooded by Nikki Koziars. Nikki, I am amped about this study and I'll mm. tell you why in a little bit, but you are a friend of online Bible studies. We've seen you before. Thanks for still being my friend. Oh my gosh, of course. <laughs> yes, you used to be on staff with yes, Proverbs. I miss you guys so much. So this is like a sweet treat for me. Oh my gosh, when you walked into the building today, it just really made my heart so oh. happy. So I'm very happy to be with you for the next five weeks Yes. to learn yeah. from you. And You're we, gonna be sick of me by the time we're done. Okay, well, <laughs> hopefully not, right? So we are excited to walk this five week journey with you. And Nikki, let's chat a little bit about your book because yeah. we. We have done two other books by you. Yes. Five Habits of a Woman Who Doesn't Quit. Yes. That was your first one. Yep. And then we did Why Her. Yep. And now Flooded. Yes. And so let's chat a little bit about it. Why did you write a book about Noah mm. and titled Flooded? Yes. Well, if you participated in Why Her, you know that I walked through a really hard season mm -hmm. of losing my mom to a brain tumor. She was given six months to live. Mm -hmm. And I really thought that that was one of the hardest things that I would ever walk through in life. And so um, I realized that doubt was becoming something that was becoming a hindrance to me. Mm -hmm. And so kind of my rhythm as a Bible study teacher is I take everyone through, unfortunately, what I'm struggling yeah. with. <laughs> well, that's good because then I think we can connect. Well, you know? You're I find from that place. other people have the same struggles <laughs> too. Um, it seems to work. And mm -hmm. so I write from a very raw place. Now, here's the really hard part about this book. So I thought I had walked through all the hard things and learned all the lessons, but I will tell you this. So uh, I think we finalized the contract in October of last year. Okay. And so I just started writing the book when just a couple weeks later, my brother sadly um, committed suicide. He overdosed on mm -hmm. Tylenol PM and walked through a really hard situation with that then got home, our horse died, we had several other things, and then boom, a pandemic hit the world. Yeah, there was a lot that built off each other. <laughs> a lot. So you guys, I wrote this book from the rawest of raw places. Yeah. Um, sometimes I go back and I'm, and I'm like, oh, should I have said that? Um, but I know that God had such a, a time, such a time as this yeah. for this message, really. Um, but Noah is somebody who taught me what it's really like to receive an assignment of mm -hmm. faith. That's what I call it, to believe God for something, whether it's something he's given us to yeah. believe, something in his word, or something really hard that we get to walk through, unfortunately. And so Noah taught me some things about making decisions. And through this book, we talk about the five best decisions to make when life is hard yeah. and doubt is rising. Oh, and I think you have said in your book or maybe on the back of your book, it, this message almost drowned you. It did. Yeah. And like you talk about it, it still like, is almost drowning. Yeah. Me, <laughs> Depends on the day, you know, um, yeah. but you talk about that. And so I yeah. think that just goes to show you wrote from a really raw place. Very raw. Yeah. And I got to walk through this study or read this book along with who you'll see on the blog, um, our study leaders. And they said, Nikki, that they felt like you were right at a coffee shop with them. Mm. Like they felt like you were so relatable. Um, you asked asked the hard questions and said the things that we're all thinking but sometimes are too scared yeah. to ask. And so when you said, should I have wrote that? I think you should have because a lot of us think the same thing. Mm, so we're very grateful for this book. We are grateful for you guys to walk through it over the yes. next few weeks. But in these videos that come out every Monday, we do have a special treat for you. There's something that we created. Um, they're called Doubt Diaries. Mm. And the reason why we did this was because it's fun to see Nikki and I every week on a video, but we wanted to show some people that are very close to the ministry, people that we know personally that struggle with doubt. Mm -hmm. And they're women who maybe they are they have kids, maybe they're raising kids, or maybe they're single, struggling with singleness. They are from an array of different ages, stages, and phases. And so we wanted to share a little bit about their stories. And then Nikki is going to answer a question based on something that they say in the videos. And so before we hear from them each week, I thought I should share something personal <laughs> for the doubt diary before I asked anybody else. And so I would love to share my doubt diary with y'all right now. Okay, so a few years ago, I struggled with anxiety and fear that I was going to choose the wrong man to marry. The bigger issue, feeling like if I made a wrong decision, I'll miss out on God's best for me. I had so much doubt in my mind that I was paralyzed by fear to make a choice. So instead, I didn't move, and nothing changed except the fear of what if in my mind. 
Now, spoiler alert, I made a decision and the decision led to the man who I believe God had chosen for me. And so what I would love to hear from you, Nikki, is what would you say to the girl who may feel similar to me, who struggles with making a decision and believes that one decision could lead to a life outside of God's best? Mm. So there's my doubt diary for you, Nikki. (laughs) Well, Kendra, I really love this because you're a super fun and happy and positive person. In fact, we texted just a couple weeks ago yeah. and I shared something with you. I said, you told me how much you struggled with doubt. Mm-hmm. And I said, I really have a hard time believing that yeah. because you're so confident. And so I'm grateful that you went first today to kind of set the tone for the conversations that we're going to be having in small groups and on the blog yeah. and on social media, because vulnerability is one of the things that we have to have as we walk through this. Mm-hmm. So I love that you wrestled with God through this. Oh, wrestling's a very kind word to say, but like struggled, like, yes. yeah, hands yeah. clenched, all the things. Yeah. But here's what I know about you. Even though you and I didn't see each other very much this last year, yeah. I know that you are a woman who made decision number one that we're going to be working through this week, and mm-hmm. that is to walk with God. Yeah. And when we open up the scriptures and we see Noah, and you're going to you're gonna learn more about this this week, um, we see that Noah was a man who was righteous in his generation, and he was a man who found favor with God. And it became that way in his life because he was a man who walked with God. Mm. Now, this was not a out for a stroll, on a, like today's a beautiful day, right? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, sun is shining. Well, yes, yeah. gorgeous day. No, this is like the really hard places in our lives where we really have to put our feet into the ground and take those steps. So I know, because I know you personally, that you were a woman who stayed in community. That Mm -hmm. was one of the most important decisions that you made. Yes, yeah. You were also a woman who decided that walking with God looked like reaching out to others. Yes. You needed counsel in your life. You needed wisdom from people who have walked through this before you. And that is a really hard thing when we're walking through the hard thing to remember that, oh yeah, there's people that I can come alongside Mm -hmm. who can help me through this. And Nikki, I didn't even want to admit that I was struggling with this area of my life because I had struggled with singleness for so long that I didn't want to like get to the point where I was about to make what I wanted for so long, which was to be married Mm -hmm. and see that I was struggling in it. So I wanted to keep it to myself. Mm -hmm. But the moment that I asked for some counsel, um, it would like open my mind up to just some peace of mind and I was able to wrestle with it. Yeah. Um, a little bit better. Yeah. Because honesty is where it starts with God. Right. And we can't hide from God. We can't hide our struggles from him. He sees it all. But unless we're willing to be honest about where we're at in our process, we can't really expect God to take us from here to there. Right. Like sometimes I hear people say, I'm just so frustrated with God. He's just not answering my prayers. He's just not doing what I'm asking him to do. But my questions always lead back to, well, how are you really getting in this Mm, with God to be able to get to the other decisions that we'll talk about later on? But so this first decision to walk with God, here's what it's going to look like for all of you doing this this week. It's going to mean doing the work. Yeah. We're we're just starting to uncover the struggle of doubt in our lives. Uh, For most of us, it's been there our entire lives. Mm -hmm. um, And there's been something that has just piled on top of something else that has led us to this place where literally we feel like we've been flooded with what I call unbelief. And unbelief is a really hard thing to get through, but we don't have to get to that point. So right now we're, we're in a stage of doubt, but we don't have to cross over to unbelief Mm -hmm. where we've completely turned from God. So this week, as you study your memory verse this week, Mm -hmm. as you read the chapters, as you dig into the scriptures in a deeper way, as you watch the teaching videos, as you engage in prayer with other people, you are taking steps to walk with God. Now we know kind of, sort of almost the ending (laughs) of your struggle. And we know that because you continue to walk in faith with God, that you were able able to get to the point where we see a sparkling yes. ring on your finger today. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And there is a promise that God gave you that is going to be fulfilled. You know, we're filming this a little bit early, um, but it's going to be fulfilled in your life. Yeah. And I can't wait to see the legacy that's going to come from your marriage and from your life. Now, not every time does it wrap up with a beautiful shiny ring right, on our right. fingers. That's Som- so true, Nikki. I'm glad you're that Sometimes doubt out. leaves us with more questions than answers. Mm-hmm. And you're going to hear this week from my own struggles, you yeah. know, with my brother and with my mom and just some other things that I wasn't able to make sense of it. Mm-hmm. 
but I have been able to see God's faithfulness in it. And that really is where my strength comes from today. And I love that you're the one that's leading us through this, through your words of flooded, because something that we love here at Proverbs 31 Ministries is really getting into God's word because the, that's where the answers are going to come. Yes. And that's where yeah. the wrestling is going to make the most impact. And so something that you'll hear us say at the end of every video, um, or maybe you'll see it on the blog is when you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything. Mm -hmm. And Nikki, I think you're giving us a wonderful foundation to live that out and see what comes of it. So mm -hmm. I'm excited for week one. Like Nikki said, week one, we're going to talk about the decision to walk with God. And I think it's going to lay the foundation to what's to come. Yes, so Nikki, thank too. you. Absolutely. Wow.